Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm very delighted to be here. This is my first time I was invited, kind by the sex group. I, I cannot say I was convinced. I was convinced. I was really taught to, you have to be here at Basel because this is the cluster in Europe, the license cluster. So today I would like to give you a kind of journey about the Hong Kong uh, biomedical cluster. And it's a kind of journey like, I tell you a little bit about the value chain. This is the first thing. The second is about the funding and how to connect the dots in Asia. So when I show this picture in the beginning, it's always like I want to showcase you like a, uh, it's a city like New York. A city never sleeps. It's very vibrant. And it's also a bridge between the East and West. So when we talk about the Hong Kong uh, government, we are from the uh, agency. We are a government agency doing the foreign direct investment activities, um, inviting companies to, to, to land in Hong Kong. I belong to the innovation technology uh, group where I should cover life sciences, AI, robotics, even mm -hmm. semiconductor, uh, microelectronics, et cetera, and so on. But today the talk is about biomedical. And our services, of course, free of charge, and we are professional, and we have over 30 offices in the world, so you can connect in London, and in, in Berlin, and Tokyo, everywhere when you have some questions. How about the, the, the ecosystem, technology ecosystem in Hong Kong, and also about the market opportunity? So uh, this is also one of my first slides always. Not only that I mentioned the, the, the 30 offices where you get, get some advice, market reports, et cetera, and so on, but for me important is to say uh, that Hong Kong is really in the center of Asia. I lived in Japan 10 years, went very often to China, mainland China, and also to Hong Kong, so also countries from Southeast Asia. So reaching out to Hong Kong, placing there is like uh, reaching out to the 50% of the world's population within five hours flight time. Uh, this is just a snapshot about everything. So what is Hong Kong? You know, um, the, the British, the English persons shaped it to a very perfect place. I must say it's very unique. We are superior standards and services. Uh, IP protection is vital. This is a very elegant tax regime in, in, in Hong Kong in place. Then later I will also mention about the uh, Hong Kong exchange because we are the third biggest financial hub in the world after New York and London. And then I want to tell you also a little bit about the Greater Bay Area. It's not San Francisco, it's a, the area be, behind Hong Kong with Shenzhen, et cetera, with a population of over 80 million people. And then more about our system in detail. Life science, one of my early uh, slides are always the kind of like a value chain. This is for me a kind of quick outline where companies can land because you have different stages. Maybe you're a startup, you're a mature company, you're a service company, and you say, okay, I have to find my key opinion leaders, my friends, my experts to, to talking to and to, uh, to partner. And then you can see the entire uh, value chain here from the basic research, uh, translation research to, to the market. Important is that all other famous, renowned pharma biotech companies also placed with, with R&D or sales offices in Hong Kong and you find uh, um, a large number of hospitals and also clinical trial centers are in place in Hong Kong. Um, this is, of course, like everyone el everywhere else in Europe. You have a kind of system with public and private. We have uh, public and private hospitals. We have a kind of specific uh, system, uh, also with health insurance and also about regulation. So this means, based on the harmonization, if you're already acknowledged in Europe or in America or in Japan, uh, you can uh, start straight in, in, in Hong Kong, and of course you can also do some backup trials in, in Hong Kong. Uh, then I always show this picture about the elderly persons there. It's for me very important because now uh, when I lived in Japan, uh, we always said, okay, how will it be in the future with our population? And then we found out it's a very big challenge of the, the silver population, the aging society. So with this, uh, I'm very specific looking for companies in Europe working on that, also in the field of CNS, Parkinson, Alzheimer's, uh, diagnosis and treatment, and therefore I want to outline uh, the, 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 this topic to you, but also invite you to talk to me about how to find these companies in Switzerland, Europe, that I can invite them, that I can connect them to key opinion leaders and also to investors. Uh, this is about the clinical trial uh, uh, ecosystem and value chain. There's, for example, the Queen Mary Hospital, or Prince of Wales Hospital. All the prominent, prominent and renowned uh, CROs are, are present and also preclinical units. This is another value chain, of course, healthcare service system, 
like everywhere else in the, in the world. So what is important? It's the prevention, diagnosis, treatment, and rehabilitation. And now we, as you know, we enter the, the, the now and future time of precision uh, personal -like medicine. So it's not about that you go to the doctor when it's too late. No, you have more tools, better diagnosis. In the future, I, I think everyone will wear wearables, and this will maybe get the knowledge also from the insurances that you have not only the second health market going to the first market, so people should be more healthy and go for a better, longer life. And later we talk also about longevity. Uh, this is about the uh, diagnostic companies. I mentioned this because this is already triggered with the diagnosis. Uh, diagnostica is very important. We have some uh, prominent companies uh, like Genomics and Sunomics. They, they merged. They are actually a little bit older companies, but very, very uh, um, uh, uh, promising and, and successful, but now comes the interesting part that a small startup company bought them. I will tell you later the, the story because it's very important that it's not only counting that you are long in the market or in the, in, in the business and suddenly you have some newcomers taking over your business based on investment. This is about, uh, I already triggered this about the medical AI or AI drug discovery. I find this very interesting because I think the, the development time is, gets longer and the costs are rising. And then we have some companies like in Silicon Medicine, they came from America, the place in Hong Kong, saying, you know what, we want to help with this journey to speed up the drug discovery and drug development uh, activities, and they are very good. And we're seeing other companies coming to Hong Kong, not because we are the biggest market, we are just a small market with 7.5 million people, but they say we can utilize Hong Kong as a test market, as a springboard to Asia. And there are also other issues like other therapeutic areas, interesting, as I mentioned, not only cancer, diabetes, specific in the CNS area. So placing in Hong Kong means not only reaching to mainland China, mean also re reaching out to Japan. Japan is a very promising uh, country, a market with 127 million population. They have pockets, they have regulation, they have a good system. They trained me there, so I would recommend Please make the combination of Hong Kong and Japan in the future. Uh, this is about, this is a slide from a colleague, he called it Pharma Revolution in Hong Kong, but you already heard this before. Just the session from before, I just sneaked in like five minutes and heard about this uh, very promising activity. So when we talk about uh, um, stem cell innovation, it's about new tools, not only about the IPS, it's all about organoids, it's about uh, bioprinting, so in the future we can do better and also maybe reducing some, some animal tests. Uh, this is about the Hong Kong Genome Project, as also in Europe you have ser several sites where you say we have to make more, more tests and, and studies about uh, healthy and not healthy volunteers to get this kind of court studies to have better, uh, developing better medicines in the future. Uh, this is just some examples from, from, from Europe. I call it Dach Talents, so Germany, Austria, and Switzerland. I just visited Oncolis in Lausanne, very promising, an eye disease company. The reason why they moved to Hong Kong or why they have their daughter company in Hong Kong was because of the investor. We have a group called Li Kai Ching. I think he's one of the richest person in, in Asia. And he said this is very promising. So they connected this company, placing in not only Lausanne and Hong Kong, but also they have now American activities. So the funding was very vital. And this is for the scale up phase globally. Ah, of course, we talked about Corona before. We, uh, I think, I hope we are over this kind of area but Moderna place in Hong Kong and they will also do additional R&D activities. Fundraising. I think this is maybe the most interesting part of today of the slides because the other was just a general overlook, the value chain. So as I mentioned, we are the, the um, third biggest financial hub in the world and how about the IPO journey? The IPO journey can be interesting when you have a kind of special stage at your company, you're already over series A and B and C. And then you say, I want to scale up, I want to leverage more. Possible, I can utilize Hong Kong for the fundraising and then not, not only seeing Hong Kong as a, as a unit and hub, but also going for the other markets in, in, in Asia. And when you compare it to European op opportunities going up here in America, of course, America is a no-brainer because America is a huge market, et cetera, and so on. And the IPO uh, situation was good in the last years. Uh, Europe was okay. But we got a kind of very uh, fascinating momentum, I call it the push and pull effect with China, because America had some talks or a quarrel with, uh, with China. So there was a talk about, are you going IPO in New York or in Shanghai? 
and Hong Kong was free of that. And then we got this effect that many mainland companies actually placed in Hong Kong because of IPO. And often you can go IPO for, for a half billion US dollar. And then we created a new chapter 18A. This is going pre-revenue IPO in Hong Kong. And this is a kind of fast track to companies. And therefore, I would like to reach out for especially younger companies here in the, in the conference, uh, thinking about not only uh, developing in Europe, but also maybe to, to reach out for this, this opportunity. Yes, this is uh, also an overlook. So when you see this from 2017 uh, to now, you see a big number of IPO or, or increasing numbers for the pre-revenue companies. And then we have all the, uh, the all rule sets, the regulation also. Plus, uh, we have a special Hong Kong exchange experts, they're biotechnology experts, but they will also talk to you about your, your journey, your scale-up phase in, in, in the world, in Asia, but also about the promotion, call it a special tool. This is a slide from the homepage. It just show you showcasing you companies uh, going, they went IPO in, in Hong Kong, and this is the company I mentioned, TigerMed, is a Chinese CEO, very successful. And this is the company, Prenetics, I already triggered, this is so interesting because you saw the other diagnostic companies, they, they did very well, but this, the CEO of Pranatics, very skillful. Um, I, I told my wife this person can sell ice cream to Iceberg because he, he, he teamed up with uh, Adrian Chang. He's one of the richest person in Hong Kong. And they went to Spark Journey. It's called Special Purpose Acquisition Company. It's like a vehicle company. And this tycoon, uh, Adrian Chang, uh, teamed up with them, and they went Spark IPO, even it's a startup, for 1.7 billion US dollars. And then I said, hey, after the pandemic, they're doing PCR tests, maybe the business will go down. No, they're so smart, they had the money and bought these other diagnostic companies. So why I'm telling the story is, think big, if you're a young company, anything can be possible. This is also from the Hong Kong Exchange. This is, this is the Biotech Summit. It was just recently in September, and the last time... Uh, we asked uh, Dr. Sain from Biontech uh, to, to make the keynote as the person of the year. He made a video uh, uh, recording, but it was very pro uh, nice to hear his outline. And when you talk with our persons, you also talk with other guys, international guys. We call it the, the uh, JP Morgan event of Asia, you know. So mingle with us. So it's similar like the, the Sachs Forum event in, in Switzerland. So the kind of meet the, 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 uh, the, the, the best people guys with energy and knowledge and, and, and yeah, good business insights. Yeah, Greater Bay Area. So this is just the background of Hong Kong. So when you see Hong Kong, uh, it's just 7.5 million people, but with the Greater Bay Area, you have a population over 80 million. And it's not only about the market access, it's also about like a talent pool and also about different industries. So one cluster is actually more dedicated to biomedical, the other is more medical devices, etc. So you can use it as not only a market access or working bench, but also a kind of talent pool. Uh, this is a similar outline about the resources. Then this is our science park. Uh, I think we have over 1,000 tech companies, over 200 are biomedical, and I call it the city of city. So nearly like the Singapore style, it's very lean. You can rent an office. Sometimes you get an office when you get the incubation money. We give incubation money, uh, six million Hong Kong dollar, uh, it's non-dilutive, you don't have to pay back, you just have to pass the test. For young companies, it's around 670,000 euro, that's the plan. And then you can also, using lab uh, space, office space, etc., and network with the other companies. So why not doing things a little bit bigger? So they said, uh, we are running out of, of space, and therefore we create now a new park with Shenzhen, uh, and this will be now established. And, okay, size matters, everything's bigger there. But it's not only about biomedical, so maybe there's a kind of merger technologies, you know, you will ought to use, utilize robotics and other things, you know, and this is a new plan. We would like to invite companies not only uh, talking to us, but also reaching out to our colleagues in Shenzhen. So we are not so narrow-minded. We think uh, the greater barrier could be a very nice added value, for example, to the uh, Swiss uh, life science ecosystem. Summary is, um, yeah, we can help you talk to us. Our, our services are free of charge, and we can help you from every stage in your business. And this is my summary. Summary is so you see my biomedical outline, the value chain, and you're centered in Asia. 
Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Bye.